Hamish, happy new year. Welcome back to the show, dude. Thanks for having me, mate. It's always a pleasure. All right, you're in Wanganui competing this weekend. Talk to us about that to start with. Yeah, so um, obviously Cook's Classic, Wanganui, rich history mm. um, at Cook's mm. Gardens with with Peter Snell and and various other runners. And yeah, us, us high jumpers are trying to add to that a little bit as well. So yeah, competing there tomorrow, which will be awesome. Hopefully the weather holds out, but if it doesn't, it'll still be a bloody good time. And then after that, you're obviously overseas and into the European indoor circuit. Yeah, for sure. So pretty much, um, yeah, first thing the next morning, head on a plane, um, head straight to the Czech Republic, uh, where I've got my first comp of four for the next four weeks. Okay. Uh, you started your season in Havada on Wednesday, uh, a height of 2.21 metres. So just to let everyone know, is that, a, is that a good height to start the season with? Yeah, I mean, I was stoked. Like, I think I think any sort of athlete who goes into a um, you know, the first comp of, of what's going to be a few to come out with, a, you know, a decent height and a, and a body which is feeling good. It's, it's always a win. Okay. And, and look, and reading reading the publicity, the stories that have come out so far, there's a couple of things about putting on the weight. I want to ask you about that uh, for a start. And I love the headlines as well. Tips from a high jumper. I saw one article on, on how to get high. Great headline. <laughs> yeah, got heaps of tips, mate. Um, just, just throw them my way. Nah, so... Um, We've yeah we've we've tried to try to build the horsepower a little bit um, over the, the off season because I think that was something I struggled with a little bit last year was you know when when the pu- when push came to shove the body was was just lacking a little bit um, a little bit of juice so um, yeah so we've been we've been working really hard at that we've just come off a massive strength block I'm I'm stronger fitter faster more powerful than ever um, however with with that comes a little bit more weight as well so it's just trying to. It's just trying to find the timing and, and the optimum kind of power to weight ratio. So, like I said, we're really well placed. Um, really well placed for Chunky Boy, that's for sure. Hamish, is this going to take a, a, a while to you know to to realise the full benefits of this? And is it also going to take maybe some adjusting in technique with the extra muscle? Yeah, probably. Um, and I think I think that's why it's really exciting to um, to come into a comp block and and know that you know we still can some time comps are for is just trying to trying to see what it feels like and and sort of try and relearn that that those subtle sort of changes with what's happening in the body so yeah no it's 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 all good it's all happy but at the same time um that weight will start coming off uh, as we start competing a little bit more and and sl- start doing slightly less um high intensity stuff okay i don't mean to be personal but where did you put it on i should imagine it, you know it's the legs but you can't get bigger in the bum and stuff like that can you because i mean you know that bar doesn't change in shape and size is it about is it about your quads or your calves even is it about because it's about the explosive power isn't it yeah for sure i mean i mean bigger glutes is a bigger power unit as well so there is a little bit there um which which my girlfriend's really happy about but <laughs> um yeah just the rest of the legs as well and 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 yeah, a little bit of the arms which we can pull off, even though most people will probably look at them and say there's not much to come. But yep. yeah, we'll get we'll get a wee bit off there as well. It's a look. You know, you are you are a lean, mean jumping machine. That's the whole point of being a high jumper, isn't it? Yeah. So I mean, our biggest adversary is gravity at the end of the day. So so you know, the less the less we're carrying over the bar, the better. Okay. We, you know, yeah, the Commonwealth Games uh, gold medal last year. How long does it take to put that aside? It's a fantastic achievement. Yes, you won it and everything else, but I know that that's yesterday and that's the way that you think. Today's today and tomorrow's tomorrow. You know, is 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 it easy to do that? Um, I think it is. Uh, personally, I think that um, you know, obviously, I, I sat down at the end of the season and reflected on what an amazing year it was. Um, and and yeah, it was it was great to do that, but at the same time. You know, there's bigger goals to come, and I'm always going to be chasing that that next thing. So, for me, it's it was pretty awesome to to have that year that I had. But I think if anything, it gives me massive confidence that coming into Paris 2024, I've got I've got some goodies, I've got some you know some juice, and to be able to compete with those big boys is 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 a massive tick. So, yeah, we just we just park it there. No, it's no, it's there. No, we can get a big jump when it matters, but at the same time, get excited for the big comps to come. Yeah, Hamish Kerr is uh, with us. Of course, Commonwealth Games, gold medalist, as I said, and also podium in the World Indoor Champs and everything else. And that's what I love about you more than anything, mate. I love the fact you're ambitious and I love the fact that you, you just want more. You just want to get higher and you just want to win every single comp. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think every athlete would be lying to say that they'll be, you know, happy with where they're at. Um, and, and that's something I'm definitely, definitely like buying to.
When you say that you need another six centimetres to find that, I mean, just do this with your fingers, ladies and gentlemen, your finger and your, and your, and your, and your thumb in there, and count about what you think is about six centimetres. That's actually a sizable chunk, mate. Yeah, it is a wee bit. Um, but but like I said, I mean, we've got we've got plans in place, and, and, and we know where those six centimetres are going to come from, so we're pretty, pretty confident it's going to happen. Are you allowed to tell us about where they're going to come from then? Um, look, it's... Like a lot of it is that horsepower piece. So if, if I can get just a little bit faster and a little bit stronger and, and just work off the ground a wee bit better, I'll, um, I'll, I'll be able to, you know, pick up a few of them. But there's, you know, there's, there's always little bits as well. I mean, I think that, you know, the mental game is, is always going to be refined and, and, you know, my technique, you know, will never be perfect. So we make little tweaks to that. We'll, we'll you know, just, just gradually get a few more centimetres here and there. The better you get, do you need more people around you offering these things? Because you said you brought in someone to look at your physical state. Is that the first time you've done that? Added an extra person to your team? Um, it would be probably the biggest, the biggest update we've had for a while. Um, and yeah, like you said, the team grows every year, and it's something that you know I'm, I'm super grateful to be able to have that opportunity to do that. Um, I think you know at this stage we've got probably six or seven people who are working. Um, working really hard behind the scenes just to just to look at various facets of my of my you know my whole athletic progress I suppose so yeah so we've added a strength conditioning coach who his his job is pretty much purely to look at me from a physical perspective yeah. and how that feeds into high jump and then that means that my coach can look at me as a high jumper and kind of feed back from there and so they sort of meet in the middle and create this this pretty good recipe no, I mean, it's, it's it's clumsy old pun. When you say feed, I'm always fascinated in your diet, what you're eating, all of that. <laughs> because you had eight weeks off. Now, when people have eight weeks off, I had five weeks off, okay, over Christmas. I went to the States and I had five weeks off. You have eight weeks off and I know that you don't really have eight weeks off. So what did you do during that time? Um, I, I did have eight weeks off. I'll give you that. I, um, I spent a lot of time eating and a lot of time, um, you know, having having fizzy drinks with with mates and and family and just just relaxing but yeah i also played a lot of golf so that probably kept the weight down Mm -hmm. uh, which was pretty good (laughs) and do you do you have to always watch what you know exactly exactly what you're eating i mean do you count calories no not really um i think i think for me like the massive thing is making sure i've got enough um in the tank to refuel me from my sessions uh, so so long as I'm doing that and and not eating too many you know too much macas, mm. the the nutritionist is usually pretty happy. You know when you talk about your increased power and stuff like that, what about the speed thing as well? You know, is 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 that important when you're doing your, your run up? I mean, do you need to be you know I know you need explosive power. Do you need to be faster on the ground as well? You definitely do, um, but you also have to be able to control it. And so I think that's kind of where I'm at at the moment is my maximum speed that I can run is is quite a lot faster than i actually run my high jump and that's because there's probably things there's like postural because obviously we we run straight in a high jump but then there's also a curve element just before you take off yep um and so it's all very well being able to run really really fast in a straight line but if you can't hold that curve um and really you know drive through that then then you're actually um you know there's there's kind of no point in building more and more speed um, so yeah, we do we do a lot of running and training, but at the same time, it's it's trying to build that level of comfort uh, rather than build that sort of real top end stuff. Look, I'm a real nerd when it comes to all this. I mean, I'm I'm fascinated by you know your approach and that, and it's steps, and you know it's about those same steps and getting. It's like a cricket bowler, or, you know, coming in. He you know he doesn't have to run as fast, but he's just got to get his foot footwork right. So is that how you do it? So you know exactly how many steps you're taking, and you've got to get that stride exactly right. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, fast bowling is probably the the closest thing that you can compare uh, what we do in an approach. Um, we yeah. So for me, I take nine strides. Um, sorry, actually, scratch that. I take seven. Um, yeah, we're sort of we're sort of debating whether we need nine or seven at the moment, but seven's where I'm at. Um, and yeah, so it's it's just seven strides and then take off. And I'd probably only do about oh, you know, eight to ten takeoffs in a in a comp. So. That's probably the big difference between bowling and high jump is we have a lot less chances to to get it right, um, and you know that that one wide that we bowl and over is is a miss. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. makes a big difference. That's such a discipline trying to and and knowing that that you have to keep to that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, at the same time, that's that's the fun of our sport is is knowing that on the day you have to you have to bring your A game and you have to be 
you know, pretty much 100% from the start. All right, a couple of questions. We'll let you go because I know you got you're a busy boy at the at the, at the at the at the moment. How high can you jump? Have you set yourself a target in your own mind? You don't have to tell us what it is, but have you set a target? I have set a target. Yeah, um, that target is quite a lot higher than what I've jumped already. I I believe I can get to 240, wow. uh, which would which would put me in you know the top echelon of high jumpers, yeah. pretty much ever. And and like I said, I mean I've got an amazing team. Um, I've got big goals, and I think I know where I can get get those extra centimeters so yeah if i could get to sort of 235 237 in the next 12 months i think that places me really well to go even higher in the future so that's you competing against yourself in the bar how much of it when you're in competition though is that and how much of it is the other bloke you're looking at because you know i mean you have to beat him at the same time you're trying to beat the bar yeah for sure i think i think it's kind of a bit of a you sort of almost try and feed off their misses um but then try not to to really get dampened when they do really good ones. So I think, yeah, it's quite an art um, and that's sort of the way I use it. But at the same time, like, you know, with big comps come big crowds. And I think yeah, that's right. probably the biggest thing with, or the biggest difference between competing, um, you know, locally and competing in a major event is that you've got a massive crowd. You've got people to really get behind you and, and that Feed sort of off, thing yeah. that you focus on. And then, and then, yeah, the competitors sort of just, they do what they do, but at the same time, um, yeah. You are keeping an eye on it. <laughs> All right, then. So, okay, why did, why did they cancel the, the World Indoor Champs this, uh, this year? Um, the main and pretty much only reason is because it was supposed to be in China. Um, um, right. And COVID. so, yeah, obviously, yeah. what's happening over there yeah. um, just wasn't going to happen. Okay. So, yeah, okay, you're overseas after this weekend. You're back for the National Champs in Wellington in March, but obviously all eyes on this World Championships in Hungary in August. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the massive one for this year, so... Everything builds towards Budapest. Okay, well, look, jump high. And look, can I say just before you go, the fact I love the fact that, you know, the Cook's Classic means something to you and, you know, you reach back and you get the memories of Sir Peter Snell. Uh, and, you know, my old man was there watching that mile, believe it or not, because he lived in Wanganui then at the time <laughs> on the grass track. And it's incredible to think they ran on grass, mate, you know, and, and you know, but just the mm. fact that that means something to you means a lot to a lot of us of this generation. So, yeah, awesome. Mate, I'm a massive fan of the sport and, you know, to be able to come to towns with massive history because we've got huge history in athletics in New Zealand. It's, it's something that's, that's, that's very exciting and, and I'm, I'm stoked that I can also add to that.